Okay, great. Uh, welcome to the September 22nd Capitola City Council meeting of 2022. 7 p.m. Well, we're a little bit past, so um, we will start with a uh, roll call. Thank you, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thank you. Council Member Bertrand. Present. Council Member Brown. Present. Council Member Brooks. Here. And Mayor Story is absent. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Here. Thank you. So before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, um, Mayor Story is not able to be here. He's bringing his daughter to college at Washington State. So congrats to the Story family. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would all join. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And item two, do we have any additions or deletions? Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. All right. And we will move on to presentations. Today, um, I am, on, by the behalf of Mayor Story, we, I am honoring Director Steve Jesberg. He has um, been our Public Works Director for over two decades, 21 years to be exact, almost to the date. <laughs> um, Director Jesberg, he's the longest termed Public Works Director, and he's done an outstanding job leading the Public Works for as long as he has, providing lots of safety, good staffing, equipment, and above all, everyday communication. He has completed numerous of significant projects here. Um, they continue to serve our community, the most recent one, the huge library project, which is amazing, um, the jetty, the flume, McGregor Park, Capitol Bandstand, and the list goes on, um, and even just to every day-to-day -day issues um, within the village and surrounding areas that I'm sure he was inundated with many times. Um, he was honored in 2017 by the Capitola SoCal Chamber of Commerce as the Man of the Year, and um, on behalf of the city council, our city staff, and our entire community, I do hereby commend and thank Steve Jesberg for over two decades of excellent and dedicated service to our city. Much easier here. Yeah. Just, here, here. Oh. I should have brought that with me. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Finally <laughs> happening. Can't believe it. Thank you all for being here tonight. I have to have some notes. I'll forget people to regret. But uh, for those of you who are at the last uh, retirement speech here, it happened on the front of the police department. My goal tonight is to do better than Sergeant Sloma. <laughs> It's a good goal to aim for. You're already there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very bittersweet decision for me. Um, been here, as I said, 21 years. It's been a wonderful adventure. I'm very happy for the, the time I spend here, and I will certainly miss it. I'm also excited to see what the future holds. I'd like to thank this council. You've been wonderful to work for. You've been very supportive. Getting us through the library project was difficult the wharf projects as they go forward. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank all the other council members that aren't here anymore, um, no longer on council. Um, and sh a shout out to a certain former council comprised of Gail Ortiz, Stephanie Harlan, Tony Gualtieri, Bruce Arthur, and Dennis Norton, who was mayor at that time, who in September 27, 2001, approved my first contract. Back in the days when the council had approved department head contracts. So they started the ball rolling, and I appreciate their support. Jamie, thank you for all your support over the years and excellent weather forecasting. <laughs> 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 to the other department heads, Katie, 
sorry, Jim, Andy, Nikki, Chloe, thank you. I appreciate working with you all. We've gone through a lot together. We've got through COVID together. We've gone through, I think we've made it through outdoor dining together. <laughs> so thank you. To all the city staff that are here or in the finance department, police department, it's been great working with you and I truly appreciate all that efforts. To the public works crew, I know there's a couple, Matt is here and Nathan's here. If anybody else I missed, I'm sorry. You guys are what public works is all about. When the council gets recognition and praise of public works, it's because of what you guys do to keep the city clean and safe. So thank you both and thank the rest of the crew that aren't here for your ongoing efforts in keeping the city functioning as well as you do. And to the crew in the office with me, Danny, Ed, and Kalosh, thanks for keeping it fun, guys. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Together we make a hell of a team, and uh, we couldn't do it. I couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you. I think we're doing pretty good here. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the community. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve the community over 21 years. Lots of uh, good projects gotten done, a lot of support from the uh, residents and businesses that we've gone through it. So it's been a great experience, as I said, and I, I think doing it without the community is smart. That's a big advantage of working in Capitol. My first 14 years, I was with the County of Santa Cruz Public Works Department, big bureaucracy, don't get to meet people, very little interaction with the public. So coming here was great, and getting to know the residents, business owners, and working with them on various issues has been great. Finally, to my wife, Michelle, 36 years of marriage. Thank you for all your support. And I'm excited to see what our future has. Cute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, council, does anybody want to say anything? Jacques? You know, I, I told Steve I wasn't going to say anything, and he said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to add a little bit to what you said. You've been here a long time. <laughs> and you'd think if you didn't work so well with people, and you've been working within the county of Santa Cruz for a long time too. I forgot how many years before you just mentioned. I bring up that I've worked with Steve and well, I can't really say that honestly because I don't work in his department, but you know, we interchange things, ideas and such like that. Always welcomes me into his office. Doesn't kick me out, but anyway, that's great. But the thing I'm trying to get to is everyone that seems to know you has a great story about you. You know, these are people that haven't worked here in, in Capitola, you know, so you're well known around this county. And I think that's a great thing. It says, it speaks a lot about you. And I know you know that, but I just thought I'd say it in public and um, we'll miss you, definitely. Thank you. Steve, man, how many projects have I brought your way in the last four years? So many. And you never have said no. You t you've hesitated a little bit, but you most certainly have gotten the job done from our coming on in 2018 with the funding for our wharf to paving our streets to those darn bollards. Um, you really, really have done such a tremendous job and thank you so much you make my job easier because i can pick up the phone and just say hey this is what i'm hearing from the community and you make it happen and i really truly appreciate all of your time here and i do wish you and your wife the best in your new journey so thank you so much steve thank you so much for all of your years of service i can't tell you how many times i've had questions well I guess I, I don't need to tell you because I came to you with my questions. And then again later when I forgot the answer and couldn't find my notes and you were always so kind in providing me with the information I needed. Um, you've never hesitated to welcome us, um, and I think I speak for all of us, to welcome us um, 
into your office, either virtually or literally in the before times, um, to, to share your knowledge and help us better understand the complex details of the decisions that we were making. And I can truly say that I would not have been able to make so many of the decisions that we've had to make as council members without having spoken with you first and getting your guidance and your knowledge and your feedback. Um, and I'm just so grateful for that. And I know that all of the city is, is grateful for having you in your leadership in all of these years. And I'm really excited, uh, hopefully, to, to continue to hear about the great things that, that you do and the great times that you and your wife are yet to build in the years that come. Thanks. Yeah, Steve, I have been with you the least amount of time here out of everybody, but I last night, too, I know I said the same thing, but there was no question that went unanswered. Anything you brought to Steve, he either would figure out the answer or just knew it off the top of his head. And I'm like, okay, wow. And it's just, you're, I think it just breaks down into your communication skills, too. You're always willing to respond and and give a lot of information about each and every project and not many people can say that and so it's been a huge pleasure working with you and all the intricacies of the public works department and so happy for you good luck yeah does um staff have any comments i just want to just take yeah. a quick moment we do have an event plan but i just want to say at this point how much of an honor it's been to be able to work with you steve over the years uh, the different things we've been through it sort of boggles the mind to think back to pandemics and floods and libraries and so many different disasters and we've always found a way through it together um you've taught me so much it's been so great working with you congratulations awesome do i go out to anybody else is there anybody in attendance that wants to say anything <laughs> Okay, great. We are moving along. We have um, item number two, which is additional materials. Uh, yes, thank you, Vice Mayor. Thanks. There were um, several received. So there were there was one received regarding this presentation, one for item five B, and then six additional materials for item six B, and those that were not distributed are on the dais and in the back of the room. Thank you. Great. Okay, now um, we can open up the floor to oral communications for members of the public if they wish to speak on um, anything that's not on tonight's agenda. Uh, you are given a three minute time cap if there's anybody that has communications for this evening. Hello. Hi, welcome. Hello. My name is Debbie Sheehan, and I'm the president of the Mid-County Senior Center. I came, I'm coming to introduce myself, let you know I'm a long time, well, born and raised here, a <laughs> long time resident. Both my parents were born and raised here. And um, so I have deep roots in this community. I've lived in Live Oak forever. And wanted to reach out to you and let you know that the Mid-County Senior Center is looking to grow its membership. And to also, I would like us to grow our involvement in the community. So to that end, we've reached out to the uh, Red Cross. We now have Red Cross blood drives. We've had three. In fact, our last newsletter had a picture of me with my arm there, <laughs> giving my blood, trying to encourage others to do so. So I brought a few business cards. They have the senior center phone number, the email, and it had the cell on there is my personal. But if you call them, they'll just direct you to the president. I'd be very happy to work with anyone or answer questions. If you have anything that comes up after about how to grow our center, grow our connection with the community, grow our participation with the community, please do let me know. That's a big goal that I have that I'd like to try to accomplish. And I think I saw a question. Jacques Gareth, yeah. You had that yeah. question face. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did have a question, please. My, my wife keeps suggesting, with a kick or two, that I sign up for the dance <laughs> courses you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think she wants me to take her, too, but um, <laughs> I'm a lousy dancer. so. Is it true you have great dance classes? I've been yes, hearing Yes, we this. do. And silly me, I didn't bring a newsletter with me like I should have. So uh, you're welcome to look on our website. And the website is on here, so I'll be giving you a card. It's a new website. and Or just stop by any time and pick up a newsletter. But yes, we have dances every week, every Friday. We have dance classes a couple times a week. Some of the time we have dance classes right before a dance. 
and they take all levels of dancers. So if you have six left feet, that's still okay. <laughs> you can come on in and practice a little bit and then show your wife what you can do. And I bet she'd love it if you took her to one of our dances. And they're very much, very casual. We never have enough men. So a lot of the dances and couples are women dancing together. Lots of them are, especially the country and the line dancing is just open. Anybody can dance with anyone. But we have waltzes, we have ballroom, uh, country line dancing, and we also have live bands. So all of that you can check on our website or come into our our newsletter yeah, or call sounds, me. Great. That sounds fun. Okay. Great. It Thank is you. fun. Okay. They have a very good time. So who, where would I put leave these? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, thank you. And I hope well, hope to start attending your meetings and working on a partnership. Great. Thank you. I'll look forward to seeing you. Any other members of the public? Oh, that's right. Uh, are there anybody on Zoom? Any attendees or anybody with their hands raised? Chloe. So I do see one person. Oh, great. Uh, Janet, you know, allow you to speak. Great, thank you. I do believe I accidentally muted you. I apologize. Okay. okay. Um, I just want the council to know that the traffic on 41st at Claire's and 41st has been very bad with people stopping in the middle of the intersection as they're trying to go northbound onto 41st. Um, it, there haven't been any accidents, but there's quite a bit of frustration about what's going on there. That's all. Okay, thank you, Janet. Are there any other Zoom hands? Okay. Great, all right, that will take us to item four. We, uh, any staff comments? We do, we have a few comments for you this evening. The first one is, is we just celebrated Steve's retirement and I'm here to announce that we have a new public works director who's been named for the city, Jessica Kahn. Uh, she will be attending our next meeting and we'll be introducing you to her then and to the community. Great, thank you. And then I think we have a comment from Steve and from uh, Nikki as well. Awesome. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Um, I am here to uh, talk about, for the public as well as the Council, um, our upcoming Mayor for a Day essay contest. Um, the essay submissions are currently open. Uh, anybody that wants to make a submission can find that information on uh, the city's website. Um, the deadline for that essay submission is on September 30th. Um, so we invite all elementary and middle school students to write an essay um, that would tell the city, if you were the mayor of Capitola, what would you do? Um, the, so the winners that are selected, both in the elementary division and the middle school division, um, will attend one of the upcoming council meetings in October. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nikki. Nikki, I just have a question. Will they be allowed to sit up here on the dais? Uh, well, we, we haven't we hadn't made that decision just yet. It's something that we can entertain, um, but we would definitely be presenting them with recognition for uh, winning the essay contest. Okay. Well, they don't have to go through the whole meeting, maybe. Okay. <laughs> well, you could... <laughs> We don't they want to scare them away from yeah, public Yeah, we don't want to scare them away yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council. As you're aware, t this weekend the Capitol Beach Festival will be occurring. A regular part of that festival includes a lighted boat parade. Unfortunately, due to the heavy rains we had on Sunday, uh, we've had water quality issues in the lagoon requiring us to drain it to keep the fish healthy. And we met today with, I met today with the festival organizers and their decision has been made to cancel the lighted boat parade this year. 
Um, it is still going to have decorated floats. They are going to be placed on the beach um, behind the seawall along the Esplanade. So fans and attend people who attend the festival will be able to watch them being built on the beach there. And then rather than the floats going by, people will walk by the floats and, and, and we'll do it that way this year. It's kind of a, a freak occurrence, but uh, unfortunately I'd like to thank the um, committee. Um, they were very easy to work with and understood the problems with it, and they came up with a great solution. So, Great. Thank right. you for working that out. All right. Any uh, city council comments? Jacques? Yeah, I, I have um, something that's came to my attention, and I'd like to call on uh, Katie Hurley to give some comments. And the issue I, I'm thinking about is what's going on in InShape. Uh, their pool's been closed for some time, and a lot of the members um, are not able to enjoy a, a normal swim. And so I reached out to management at InShape and found out that in any given day, uh, 600 or more people use that pool. And this is a main part of their you know, exercise and part of their life. They hang out around the pool and talk to all their neighbors and stuff like that. Um, so I did reach out to our staff, and I'd like to know if you could give some comments about what's happening in terms of the permit that they've applied for and sort of give us an idea of what they're trying to do. Yes, so um, InShape has gotten comments back on their permit, and um, they've gotten comments from our building department and from county um, environmental. The comments are not large changes. The contractor who's working on the project expects to have their amended plans in this by the end of this week. So then we will be reviewing those plans and hopefully they're now in compliance with building and once they are, we'll be issuing a permit. But they're, so they're in the building permit stage and once they get the correct approval, it'll get a permit issue. So um, sounds like it's moving along. Uh, what do you think the time frame is? Um, the only time frame I can, um, th that I have as an estimate right now is that they plan on submitting by the end of the week. They did say that they're a really large firm that um, works on pool applications, and so that they're, they're hoping to have it in by the end of this week. So, okay. And after that, our turnaround time, um, usually for resubmittal, is a few weeks, but we're also um, dependent on county health, which I have no oversight of. Okay. Okay. Well, sounds like it's moving along, and um, I hope people here um, could pass it on to people in the public, and I hope those who are in the public um, could sort of feel that we're doing our job. And thank you very much, Katie. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Any other council comments? Yeah, I have a quick comment. Yeah. I uh, just wanted to share, uh, through my role as the president of the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments, we recently received uh, a letter from Senator Ana Caballero uh, congratulating AMBAG for an award of, of about a uh, million dollars, it's a little more than a million dollars, um, from the California Department of Housing and Community Development to be used for outreach and identifying eligible uses that strengthen communities that were disproportionately impacted by the pandemic and to better identify the location and characteristics of these impacted households and target sub allocation projects to serve community, community members. So it's exciting news. Um, this, of course, is funding that will go throughout the AMBAG jurisdiction, which is the three uh, counties, um, Santa Cruz, Monterey, and San Benito. But, of course, being a part of Santa Cruz County, of course, we will see the benefits as well. So I just wanted to share that. Wow. Congratulations. Anything from Yvette? All right. All right. So that will take us to item number five for consent. Do any council members wish to pull an item? Seeing none, um, they're all, there's three items on the consent, so they will be um, moved in one motion together. Do I? Huh? Oh. We don't go to public on comment. consent? Or do we not go to com consent? You don't need to actually, that's oh, covered okay. with the public comment. Oh. oh. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. So, you on your toes. That, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. Um, anyone care to? I will move the Make a motion. Consent. Thank you. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. Okay. I was sitting next to you. You kicked me just like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have a movement and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Brown. Aye. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number six, general government. So we will go to um, item A, which uh, was an appeal of 1410 Prospect Avenue design permit. Um, let's see. And the re recommended action is to uphold the Planning Commission's decision to approve the variance and to adopt a resolution with additional conditions of approval and findings that address the matter appealed. Do we have a presentation? Yes, thank you. Thanks. And good evening, council members. Good evening. The item before you this evening is an appeal of a zero foot rear yard setback variance at 1410 Prospect Avenue. Uh, on April 7th, 2022, the Planning Commission approved a design permit, historic alteration permit, variance, and coastal development permit for a new home at 1410 Prospect Avenue. This slide show, shows the approved site plan with property lines in red. Let's see here. The area in yellow shows the footprint of the garage and the home. And that area in blue shows the portion of the home that is located in the rear setback. The applicant was granted a variance to allow a zero foot setback on that rear line. The backyard is adjacent to the RTC railway and the existing pathway as well, which is shown further south in brown. On April 18th, the 2022, the city received an appeal from the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. The RTC appealed the Planning Commission's decision, granting a variance of for a zero foot rear setback and listed concerns, including potential to interfere with the RTC's uses, operations, inspections, and maintenance, to constrain public access, to increase erosion, and to reduce stability of the bluff. On August 18th, 2022, the city's independent peer review of the owner's geotechnical investigation was completed by Pacific Crest Engineering. Pacific Crest Engineering concluded that the original geotechnical investigation was adequate and that no additional study should be required. On August 31st, 2022, the applicant submitted revised plans which relocated the proposed structure three feet away from the rear property line, uh, which is also away from the RTC property. In a follow-up response, the RTC submitted a letter of general satisfaction with the modified design and conditions of approval. Those conditions of approval have been modified or added to address the RTC concerns. This slide lists the conditions of approval which were added or modified, uh, which are relevant to the appeal. The full list of conditions are included in a draft resolution as attachment nine found on page 158 of the packet. And since the property owner has addressed the concerns of the RTC, staff recommends the city council adopt the additional conditions of approval as drafted and shown in the underline that address the issues raised in the appeal. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Questions, Jacques? Yeah, um, a lot of people probably don't know, but I'm on the RTC commission and I brought this issue up to RTC staff. Um, one of the issues that um, was of concern to me was the lack of communication there were some issues in terms of notifying RTC of the plans that were impending in, in the development. Um, I did not investigate further. I just wanted to have this um, be aware, you know, from the RTC perspective. So I was wondering, can you comment on what I just brought up in terms of communication? And I don't know if you were involved in this particular program at the time, so I'm just trying to get an idea of the communication issues, which was very important because RTC didn't have, it was a last minute thing from RTC's standpoint, 
and so I don't know how this occurred so thank you very much yes thank you um, so we do we send out notices to all adjacent property all properties within 300 feet um, so a green one of our green postcards we went back and we checked it was sent to the RTC when you're a large organization and where those green cards may end up I'm not sure but we did go back and make sure that that did get sent to the RTC there was also um, communication on behalf of uh, by, by the resident directly to the RTC as well as our staff so prior to going to Planning Commission and then I will say um, the communication since the appeal has been excellent the property owner is here this evening um, if you have any questions for them and their representative Derek Van Alstein and um, but they even today the RTC reached out uh, thanking the uh, thanking Sean and the neighbors for all the effort put forth with the you know to find resolution and work through that so we will make sure in future circumstances when there is a development next to the RTC to reach out to their development crew we're, we're all really good friends now after <laughs> working through this and we know who to contact so I think in the future we'll go beyond the green card and um, just well the first time we did too so but we'll make we'll, we'll open that line of communication and make sure it they, they understand when things are going to Planning Commission and Okay, yeah, I did spend Harder. a lot of time with the director of the RTC and the staff person that has this particular project. And um, I think he was a little surprised, but it was COVID, so I don't know where the mix up was. But I'm glad to see that it was worked out. And I also do know uh, you gave me a lot of attention on this issue as well. We talked about it. So um, I'm glad it was resolved. And I do have questions of the owners, if I may. Um, how do you feel about the resolution? Because uh, you know, I've, I walk past your property all the time. I take the little path, and you know, when I first saw the initial plans and how you, you know, it just seemed perfect. But this resolution seems pretty good. What's your feeling, you and your wife? I yeah, really this is my wife Amy, and along with our architect uh, Derek Van Alstein, okay. I'm Alex Johnson. And like for us, number one, it's been quite a journey to get here. Um, we've been in the house like uh, about three years right now. Lucky to have it through COVID, but it's been a little uh, dilapidated. It's old. It needs to be updated. So we're really excited. In full support of the resolution, I think we've worked really hard. And I just like to commend the staff of right. you know all the hard work they did to get us here has been super great and you know like you said maybe the the beginning side when I opened up uh, conversations with the RTC it was a little disconnected but I think the loop closed and we're in a good place now so thank you okay thanks it's good to hear thanks for the resolution from staff and uh, well no one's here from RTC but I know they probably work very hard with you too thank you we also do have someone from the RTC oh uh, I didn't see on <laughs> zoom oh it's oh on, on zoom right here John Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Sarah. How are you doing? Um, I just want to say a few words. Um, thank you, Commissioner Bertram, for bringing this to our attention. We are a small staff, and but we carry a very large load. I say that we're lean and mean. And sometimes things like this fall through the cracks. So um, I want to just say thank you, um, Commissioner Bertram. I also wanted to say thank you to the City of Capitola Planning staff. Um, they've been stellar. Um, this is the second really positive experience I've had with them in the last month. And I just want to um, let you guys know that your staff works really hard and um, we've developed a really nice partnership and um, I don't think this is going to happen again. <laughs> so thank you. Appreciate it. Um, any other questions? Any public comment on item 6A? All right. And then any other um, city council comments on the? I'll go ahead and move item 6A with staff recommendation to uphold the Planning Commission decision to approve the variance and adopt a resolution with additional conditions of approval and findings that address the matter appealed. I'll second. Great. We have a motion and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Yes. Thank you. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Thank you. Okay, and down to item 6B. 
consider the petition to create a dog's off-leash area at Monterey Avenue Park. The recommended action here is to take no action. Um, so basically maintaining the existing rules requiring the dogs to remain on leash at Monterey Park Ave um, due to the existing uses. Do we have a presentation? Yeah, give me a minute here. Okay, thanks, Steve. Here. Yes. Um, I, I live too close to right. the, uh, Sorry. the project being discussed, so I'm going to recuse myself and then come back later. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you in a little bit. Do I have to share? Right? Yeah. Flip on your camera too. Is that your room open? Um, I'll just sit now. It's not that bad. She's going to let you in. Oh, that's just yeah. Really making Steve do a lot of presentations at his On the last day. I know. Keep an eye on port. Sorry, Council. Okay. I'm slow tonight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Good. It's up there. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council. Uh, as, as the agenda said, we are here tonight considering a petition to allow some off leash dog activity in Monterey Avenue Park. Uh, quick background on the petition. The council received the petition for off-leash dog. Um, the petition's asking for a trial period of 90 days. The off-leash period would be between 5.30 and 6.30 each evening. All dog owners would pay must pay attention to their dog to ensure that it does not bother any persons that may be at the park at that time. All dog owners must commit to cleaning up after their dogs. And dogs will not be allowed to interfere with ongoing activities in the park, for example, baseball, et cetera. Um, the petition also included this. Uh, if requested, we could set up a temporary expandable fence at the back of the park to separate our dog from a larger group using the field. So here's a overhead of Monterey Park. Uh, Monterey Avenue is up here on the left-hand corner. Obviously, here's the parking lot baseball, not really a diamond, baseball circle, <laughs> <laughs> um, where softball and uh, little league practices occurs in softball games. So anyway, the blue X here represents, you know, the general area that the petitioners are asking to be able to occupy as a off-leash off area. Um, just our existing codes, uh, 6.14-200 talks about dogs in public spaces. I've highlighted kind of the pertinent issues here that dogs are permitted on leash in the following parks, and that includes Monterey Avenue Park. Um, if you read back into the code a little further, it says dogs are, are not permitted anywhere on city property except for these exceptions here, which include Monterey Park on leash. Um, existing off-leash dog areas, we, the city only has one permitted area, that is at McGregor Park. Uh, which is you know on McGregor Drive. It's about a, a mile away from Monterey Park. Existing park uses: um, New Brighton Middle School uses it during the school sessions, obviously from Monday through Friday for 8 p.m. to 4 p.m. During the day, when classes are, they use it for PE on a on a daily basis, and they also use it for their athletics after school. I believe they play soccer there and softball. Um, they may run track there too. After the school's done using it at 4 o'clock, youth and softball, youth and soccer leagues rent the field through our recreation department. Obviously, it depends on what season's going on at that time, who's renting it. Um, there was quite a lag during COVID, obviously, because nobody was, was playing those, but they do rent the fields um, during the seasons from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's no scheduled uses uh, on Sundays at the park. So our recommendation is just given there's so much use there, Areas are tight. Um, unless we can create a, a well-defined fenced area, that it's really going to be problematic to create, uh, allow a, a permitted off-the-leash area. Um, 
So that's our recommendation would be to take no action and maintain the existing uh, rules at the park. But we do have options if the council wants to consider them. Um, these were contained in the agenda report. If the council wants to increase the number of off-leash dog areas in the city, staff would suggest establishing this as a future goal during this uh, budget setting and goal setting sessions going to come up in, in May. If the council wants to proceed with a proposed dog leash off dog leash area, off leash dog area at Monterey Avenue Park. Um, staff would recommend that we prepare a resolution and bring it back to council um, that would suspend um, municipal code 6.14.200, um, designate an area where, the, where off leash dogs are permitted and establish some rules and guidelines um, that would be posted there on a sign. So that is the extent of my report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. If we're suspending the entire municipal code, would that suspend the requirement to keep dogs off on leash in all of the other areas that are currently listed in that code as a requirement? No, that's why we would want to do it by resolution so we can specifically identify oh. which portions of the muni code we're suspending. Okay, thank you. I have, a, I have another yeah. question. Um, has, have the folks who have petitioned come forward with any other ideas or suggestions that could be talked about should we establish this as a goal of councils they haven't presented anything to me but i do believe they're in attendance tonight so okay great great um i don't know if this is a question for you or those petitioning but um was there discussion of like who would be responsible for the fence would that be on us or would that be a public Certainly effort? that's one thing that needs to get developed i mean putting up a signet or what I would think would be a quite lengthy yeah. expandable fence would take quite a bit of time and to think that that's going to be able to be put up and taken down every every night seems difficult at best so um, I think that's something the per, the petitioners could answer better okay yeah who um, from the petitioners would like to speak uh, maybe answer Yvette's question as far as yeah, we can just move the public comment okay yeah, just We'll move straight into public comment. Thank you, City Council. Uh, my name is Dave Montgomery. I'm the original author of the uh, petition. And <clears throat> I'd just like to make a couple comments. As far as um, the impact on the community goes, it's been wonderful. I think I've been written correspondence told about how um, a, a very un unanticipated but tightly knit neighborhood group has developed because all of us just gather with our dogs there. Regarding the area in particular, I think there is, an, uh, there is an adoption by the city of Cupertino in Stelling Avenue, their park, they have a dog off leash area and I forwarded the uh, city code and how they modified it to effectively have a one, in their, in their instance, a two hour period per day, an hour before sunset, an hour after sunset, year round in a specific quadrant of Stelling Park uh, where dogs are permitted off leash and it's it's tightly monitored and I discovered this petition after I, I discovered this excuse me this situation after I petitioned the original City Council so it is achievable particularly even in a, in a high density community like Cupertino um, as dog owners go we're very responsible we're constantly watching our dogs to ensure that if there are any activities in the park that our dogs don't interfere I think um, uh, Mr. Desberg showed the, the portion of the park is the furthest away from the baseball diamond and the, and the, the kids soccer fields etc so I would the the temporary fence was a suggestion in my original petition that if it was required it would be a temporary fencing you know the the, the expandable kind you just drag out and stake in and stake out if if that was uh, an issue obviously it's a reasonably decent sized area but we'd be willing to to explore how we could do that Personal preference would be to adopt the Cupertino model, which simply says all dog owners, uh, no exception, are responsible for their dogs cleaning up after them and for the safety of everyone in the park. So I'd very much like the city council to, to approve this, uh, to move forward with it. And if the trial is successful, we could then modify it uh, per the existing one over the hill. Thank you. Thank you. Start on its own. 
I start it when you start. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hi, my name is Hajan Kamalani. I've been a resident of Santa Cruz County for probably over 20 years and the capital of the city um, for the last, uh, let's say, 10. Um, I think the easy thing to do is just show you like really cute pictures of our dog <laughs> and say they're really nice, good dogs. And I don't know how that, this would ever show up on the Zoom, but I do, I, you can give you the packet. They really <laughs> love playing with each other. And I think it's different than just, um, you know just going on a walk it's very different right and I could do this but I'm not going to because they're very cute dogs and whatnot what I really want to sh talk about is the sense of community and this is my son with not my not not, not our dog but a different dog and the socialization that happens for the pa for the kids as well as for the dogs is super healthy um, as you see I mean, you know we're illegal here but I've gotten permission from all the owners in the picture <laughs> they've been willing to get photographed as well as our dogs but it's a very uh, all the owners are conscientious um, and what I want to say is it's easy it's be really easy to say no there's a lot of reasons to say no there's liability the dogs get get out of control whatever 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 I think um, but let's not do that I, I really implore you guys to let's stretch our brains and try to make this work and the reason why is this. I feel like if anything the pandemic's shown us, it's that we need community, right? We need each other and we need the socialization. I've met people through this group. I originally met this group, I didn't know this group existed. I had uh, vertigo for the last six months. And so my only like social outlet was to go take my dog out. And I met this nice group of people. And everybody has their own reason for it, but that social isolation, I think we've all seen that COVID, it, it's hurtful. It's hurtful to everybody. And it's brought people together that would otherwise not come together. You know, we from different walks of work, there's physicians, there's nurses, there's teachers, there's educators, there's, you know, construction workers, there's, we're, there's kids of all ages, there's saw my kid, there's retirees. So this is a really nice, like, social gathering. I think it's, it's a medium for it. I think we need it. The other thing that I would challenge people to do is is force us to work together and let's all work together i think today's society there's so much polarization in our world <laughs> where the lack of the civility has been gone but you only get to practice that and learn that when you're in situations where you have to hey your dogs can you know can you take care of your dog it's getting a little aggressive or whatnot let's talk let's get people talking and meeting i've met more neighbors through this in my little community then I would care to mean I have my you know school mall friends I have kids that go to New Brighton Main Street have gone through the school system but this is a different group of people and I and I will leave you with this because I only have seconds seven seconds I'm gonna leave you with this pictures of this this is actually my daughter and this is another friend of hers that she met one of our dog park people actually this gal was um, visiting from Ukraine her family got isolated and she had had this they had them paint together. And she'd said, hey, can your daughter come? Because they had met through the dog group. And I leave you with these pictures of these birds that they painted together. Then this group would have, ne this would have never happened otherwise. Um, and we're now bringing her meals because she's getting a knee replacement. So there's just things that just wouldn't happen otherwise. Wonderful, thank, thank you. Thank you. I hope that we can figure out a way to do this, even if it's a trial period. That's all we ask. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi. This is my first city council meeting. I feel very responsible as a citizen right now. Um, let me know, am I okay to start speaking? Go, please. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Jane Stewart. I've been a resident of Capitola for about six years now, Santa Cruz County for probably 10. I'm a renter. I live up on Depot Hill. Um, I became a dog mom about four months ago for the first time and my life changed <laughs> and I realized from walking him around my neighborhood that I was meeting my neighbors for the first time because I had this thing that was breaking the ice and suddenly I had more community around me and when I met the folks over at Monterey Avenue Park I, I didn't know it at the time but I was making a whole new group of friends with my neighbors and it's, in, it's incredible how important they've become in my day-to-day -day life um, in just a short time. So 
the psychological effects of being outside in the sun, taking care of your pet are enormous. The developmental effects for dogs, um, the effect that it has on their demeanor and their growth is enormous. I know that we have the one place in Capitola that is technically the dog park, but it's next to a skate park and a highway. And if, you've, if you guys are dog owners, I'm sure you understand it's loud and they're so stressed out being there that they can't play. And so this park has become an alternative and I've only witnessed responsible parenting of dogs in this location. And so I just think one hour a day, if we can have that one hour a day, see how it goes, would go a long way to establish this community and being able to grow what we've already started in terms of community. I think it's gonna reverberate out into the community at large. So thank you. Great, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Dan Steingrub. I've lived, and my wife Lisa, have lived across the street on Monterey Avenue at the uh, park for, since its inception. And what, what I like, about, I, I understand it's a very busy park and I get that, but what we, I, we also walk our dog over there. And I'm a little upset, I didn't see a picture of my dog in there. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> uh, my point is that um, I watch very closely what goes on over there and if there's a lot of soccer, a lot of activity, um, we don't take our dogs over there. We wait until it's quiet. Most of the time we go over there, the park is empty just before dark. And that's the point I'd like to bring up. And it's a great socialization for the parents of these dogs and the dogs. It's just fun. And if we could just give this a temporary shot, um, I think you'll find it. We can make this work. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. I'm Ginger. I am, I've been in Santa Cruz about 15 years and Capitola about six. We own a house just a couple blocks. She knows these guys. <laughs> I sit down. Yes. Um, Elsie is my service dog, who I adore. Um, but she is a working dog. And I just felt like I had to come and represent the working dog in our, in our community that not all dogs are just sitting at home playing around all day. We have some working dogs in, in Capitola. I work at Dominican and Pamf, and so she works with me because she's trained to get my medicine in my back if I need it, but it is amazing how much she gives my patients. The doxytocin, I call it. The doses of doxytocin the patients get. I mean, I, I've been going to that park for about hmm, five years now since she was a puppy, and the community is amazing. What I've seen there is elderly people that don't even have dogs come out around that time so they can be around a dog and around community. And they're all friendly and they, they you know, have been a wonderful part of our life, especially through COVID. Um, I actually sometimes go to Palo Alto and uh, Cupertino areas because of my work, well, I'll get sent over there, and I'll sometimes take her to parks there, and that was one of the first times I've seen there, so not just Cupertino, other places have some of these parks that's an hour before, um, or I guess in the morning, and an hour at dusk that there's off leash, and so it is working in other communities, and what I've seen is the same thing, these, these amazing groups of people that have come together that would never have come together and never shared the community resources that we have, but mainly, I wasn't even going to come up here, but I just feel like I have to represent that even working dogs need some time to play. So I hope that you decide to give this a try. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. My name is Samir Daoud. I live on Magellan Street. I've been there 25 years. And uh, this year I got my first dog. And um, I take her for a, a run, or I ride the bike, but she's running. And we go around the block a few times, and then we head to the park. 
And uh, I would do this every other day, and then I met this group of people, and I'm like, oh, is this uh, dog training? What are you guys doing? Can, can I let my dog off the leash? And they were like, oh, well, does your dog behave? I said, I don't know, she's a puppy. <laughs> so we tested it, and she stayed with the group of dogs as opposed to the soccer players or the baseball players which um, that was my fear, like she was gonna go check him out. So they all just romp together. And um, it's been about two weeks and I, I keep going back and it's always the same group, uh, different people sometimes, but these dogs have so much fun and they're playing in their own little community, just romping around and they really don't show any interest to the soccer players or anything because they have each other. And I'm starting to learn my neighbors and my extended neighbors blocks out. I'm like, oh, we have a lot in common. So uh, it's really exciting for me and I hope it continues. Thanks. Thank you. Any other members in the audience? I do think we have someone on Zoom with their hand raised. Go ahead. I will shoot myself. Hello. Um, my name is Jill Landis, and I've lived in Capitola for 32 years. I have lived, I hope you can hear me okay. I'm having a lot of trouble hearing the people from at my end. We can hear you. Um, okay. Uh, I met this group of people with my current dog, who's, who's a little pug. She goes on regular walks every day she goes on bike rides every day she goes to dog class but the highlight of her day and my day is meeting at monterey park and i do appreciate that we do have a dog park here in capitola i've been to that dog park and for some reason the dog park i don't know if it's the bark chips or the location or the people that just put their dogs in and ignore them but my dog just stands there and she doesn't interact with the other dogs and um, she tends to go toward the gate like she wants to leave. So um, I do live near Monterey Park and I've been there with this group of people. And I have to say that the dog acts together like a family and it's interesting when a new dog comes in, uh, they seem, uh, they, they, they go check it out, they evaluate it and it usually works. I also want to say that my dog has been attacked three times by the same dog who no longer, um, I don't see that dog around anymore in, in two different locations. Um, and so she is, she has become fearful because of that. I've spent a lot of money on training for that. But when she's with the group at Monterey Park, she is not like that. She is she it, it's just an amazing transformation what it's done for her and if we miss the park for a week like we did last week when i was out of town i noticed that she seems to need that but anyway we're asking for a trial period we're asking for one hour we're not asking to take over the park and i just want to say that the dogs really seem to um their behavior is markedly better at monterey park than at any of the dog parks i've been to Thank you. Thank you. Any other Zoom hands? No, I don't see any. Okay. Um, council comments? Sure. Yeah, I can start. Okay. Um, I appreciate your honesty and coming out here and telling us what you all been up to in the park and <laughs> showing your guilty pictures. With pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, too, became a dog owner recently, and I think you're – your fellow council members here, we're all dog owners, and we most certainly, I can't speak for them, I most certainly know what it's like to socialize a puppy and learning about all that. You can speak for us. Okay. <laughs> so we hear you. I hear you. I, um, and I think that we need to do this, and we need to do it right. We need to come up with a, a process. Um, my question to staff is you've suggested to have council um, identify this as a goal, but when – I can't remember when that would be. So our goal setting session usually comes up in February, so a couple months. Okay. That sounds like a long time from now for, for our community. Right. Um, and I'm feeling as if, if 
these folks here would be interested maybe in being participating and coming up with a real program. I don't know that this one hour a day is actually sufficient enough. I think that there's working family, there's a lot of different time frames that we could actually create something pretty cool um, as an opportunity for, for other dog owners, dog residents. Um, and I also think we need to create a space that's safe for our dogs. Um, I don't know if it's the park. If it is the park, I would like, I, we received a memo from our uh, school superintendent about safety concerns and, and um, the students playing out there. And so I'd like to get their, it, you know, blessing on some sort of thing we can create there at the park. I like that space. I think that space makes sense. It's highly utilized. Um, but I really love the message from whoever said we must work together on this because this is, we, I hear you loud and clear and I'd really like to see something move forward. Um, so I'm suggesting an ad hoc committee of, of a council member and, and the community. I know you are very busy, all of you, but if you could participate in some sort of working um, this out and we can explore if fencing, I don't know, what's the name of Hidden Park? What's the real name? Cortez. Cortez. Um, if that's, a, I, I know some community members might disagree if that's a space. I just want to look at all that's of the options. Way too small. Way too small, Jill said. Um, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, but I, I'd love to brainstorm on this. I I live really close by. I'd like to walk my dog somewhere and, and see if he can socialize equally <laughs> and see if he behaves. Um, but I want to do this right. So um, I'm suggesting an ad hoc to this evening and see if we can come up to, with a resolution or solution, an idea that we can most certainly um, create prior to our February goal setting. This is something we can do now, I think. So, Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm supportive of that. I have a couple other uh, comments. Uh, first, I, I think I, I want to address the comments that were made about the bark in the other dog park. Is there anything we can do about that? Can we replace it? Is there, have we looked at alternatives just so that the other dog park is more? Not called the other dog park. Well, <laughs> There's <laughs> not another I'm dog kidding. park yet. I'm kidding. Um, the McGregor dog park. Uh, is there a possibility for changing that, that wood chips out to something else or have we considered that at all? So it was actually put in at the request of dog users back several years ago oh. because of the because of issues with the uh, the ground there being very muddy and stuff um, I'd be happy to, to look around and see I think chips are what a lot of dog parks have um, it's hard to you know getting vegetation to grow and stuff like that but Wait, I'd be happy to look around. look around we at can this? look around a little bit. In, in your next three days <laughs> I got like I'm sorry Steve eight I could days help. I, I think it is yeah. eight days yeah eight days all right you got a new task in the next yeah. eight days well I'll task somebody to do yeah. that. that he still has power um okay yeah I was just curious because it's come up in a couple of the comments and it came up in some emails and so I was just curious if that was something that that we had any control or consideration over so I appreciate that um yeah, I, I agree that I am also a dog owner and um, my dog uh, cannot go off leash, unfortunately, because he's deaf and there's no way to recall him. But I would certainly like the opportunity for him to be able to socialize with other dogs in, in ways um, that he doesn't have now. And of course, in something like a dog park where there's an enclosed space, I could potentially let him off a leash because there's no chance that he's going to go running into the street or, or whatnot. Um, I like the idea of an ad hoc committee because I do think it would be exciting to have an additional opportunity for dogs off leash in our in our community um as council member brooks said i i also have you know some concerns about the monterey park area as were laid out by the superintendent um i've i've taken the concerns of the school district in mind with other issues uh, pertaining to that park and i i feel the need to do the same now but again, I feel like to echo what, what Council Member Brooks has already said, that working together, I think we can come up with an option that really works for everybody. Um, if not in that park, then somewhere in the city. So I'm, I'm supportive yeah. of that. And so I guess my question, Council Member Brooks, so is you, are, is you, are you recommending that we move forward with staff recommendation for tonight in addition to creating a ad hoc committee or are you suggesting I, we continue this or what what's your recommendation? yeah I think um, I'm gonna ask council I know Samantha's on the line I might have missed 
I'm thinking about ad hoc and the requirements. Um, I think I actually, Samantha, are you on the line? Oh, there you are. I am. <laughs> it's like the I, Wizard of Oz. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> can uh, you remind, I can't, can you yeah, you? thank you. Yeah, the rules about ad hoc committees are um, confusing and frankly not very intuitive, if you ask me. Um, an ad hoc committee can only be comprised of less than a quorum of the council. And so the only people who can be on an ad hoc committee are council members. It cannot include members of the community, um, which does not quite get at the goal that I hear the council is pressing, which is to work with the community on this issue. And so I think you have a couple options. One is you could have staff work with the community on coming up with some options and returning to council with those options. Um, that's probably the easiest, frankly. And, and if staff were having a meeting with the community about this issue, they could certainly let council know. And if less than a quorum of council wanted to attend that meeting, council, you certainly could. It just would not be an organized ad hoc committee. Another option is that if you wanted to form an, a committee with council members and community members, it would need to be a standing committee subject to the Brown Act, which is, that would be some work. Um, and I, I don't know that that's quite where you're going. I, I uh, So I think those are your options. If you have questions about those, I may be able to help you get where you want to go. I see Jamie. Yeah. I might have a third option, which I think we could do um, this, the first option that uh, Samantha outlined, which is staff can work with the community. We can take a look and brainstorm some options, get feedback from the school district. And if one of the council members just wanted to volunteer to participate, uh, we'd be happy to invite them and they could participate uh, along with the, the residents in that effort. And it could be two, right? Right, less than a quorum. Sure, if you, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to have two council members volunteer, that works as well. But it just, you wouldn't be forming a committee. Okay. That would work. Attorney. Hey. Yeah, so and and I, I understand that the community members have been working with staff and, and that these that you've done a little, you know, that this process has begun, but I really like to see something come out of it and a recommendation come to council that um, that's a little bit different than the, the current suggestion on the on uh, the table tonight. So um, I'll go ahead and make a motion to um, well, I don't need to make an emotion because we're not going to change anything on the ordinance. Um, so I'd like to request that staff work with our community in reviewing um, and some ideas. And I'd like to volunteer myself and my cute puppy to be part of that conversation. Do you want to be a part as well? Oh, if you'd rather. You want to, you want to rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> no, okay. All right. I'll volunteer to participate as well. Okay. If I if I could suggest if I could suggest that what so that it does not appear as if you're forming an ad hoc committee in violation of the Brown Act, just, I would okay. suggest that perhaps when staff organizes the committee, that staff can send out an email to the council members who are able to participate. Understand that one has a conflict, and perhaps just the first two who respond can participate in the meeting. So we would still keep it at two. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll wait for that email from staff to see if there's any council members who would like to participate. Okay, thank you to the community members for coming out tonight. Do we need to vote on creating that? No. Oh no, it was just a we're good. recommendation yeah. to staff. Okay. We're good. Cool. Great. Yes. So what we'll do is we'll reach out to I believe it's David. Um, and I will rely on you then to help us get in touch with the larger group. Great. Thank you. I just you. wanted to say one thing, too. Um, it, in the events that COVID brought upon us and all the negativity and all the bad things that came out of it, I appreciate you finding a silver lining. Mm -hmm. I think it, they were few and far between, but we need to highlight them, and I think being a part of this community is – is just that you know and it and thank you guys for starting this i i appreciate where you're coming from i agree with some of the mcgregor park issues as well my dog would 
lose it with the skateboarding. So it, that's not even an option. Um, but yeah, I, I want this to be done right. I want it to be a nice concrete program because I think there's so many ways we could take it and it could work out really well. And it would just make the community even larger too, as far as for our puppies and for everybody else involved. So um, yes, as one dog owner to all the rest, I completely am in support. But um, yeah, I want to get this streamlined so we can dot all our I's and cross all our T's and make it safe and happy for everybody. So thank you for coming forward. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. have a great night. Thank you. So no action has to be taken. Okay. So we're good. We need to call Jacques back in. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, someone let Jacques in. <laughs> Unleash him. Let him back in. I guess. All right, we'll get Check council member Bertrand back in. Mike. Hey, <laughs> get in here. This isn't the dog park. Who's <laughs> 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 controlling <laughs> the camera right now? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what? Is, are they okay? <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Welcome yeah. back. Oh. I, I think he's. Yeah. You guys are still alive. We're here. We're yeah. here. Okay. We're here. Good. Okay. No blood on live the floor. And right. Right. That will. Right. Um, now that we're all back in action, we are moving on to item six C, the lifeguard tower budget amendment. Our recommended action tonight is to approve a resolution to amend increasing the budgeted amount of $45,000 to $62,000. It's an increase of $17,000 for the purchase of a new lifeguard tower. And it looks like Nikki's going to present for us. Uh, yes, good evening again, Vice Mayor and Council Members. Uh, the item here before you is a lifeguard tower budget amendment. Um, so so progress. All right. Um, so just to give a little bit of background, um, for the past 10 years, the city has co uh, contracted with the city of Santa Cruz Fire Department, um, who has provided tower services um, on our beach during the summer, um, independent of any of our own um, activities on, on the beach. Um, that contract, our most recent contract, was a two-year contract, and it had, um, came to an end in, for 2022, or this past summer. Um, before the summer, the city of Santa Cruz had requested um, some adjustments to our contract, increasing the cost of that original contract or agreement um, due to other staffing logistics that were, we all experienced as a result of the pandemic, um, but also logistical challenges that have been increasingly complicated for the city of Santa Cruz providing services on our beach. Um, so in, and in, in order to ensure that the city had a solid plan, um, council, it, it was brought before council and ultimately approved in the budget um, to develop a city operated um, lifeguard program, which we are currently in the process of doing. Recreation has added um, an additional staff member in order to um, progress that program. Now, a lifeguard tower is a, um, a critical tool for lifeguards um, that uh, it ultimately enables their function for their job. Um, the city owns two fiberglass lifeguard towers uh, Tower 1, which is currently located closest to the bandstand area, that tower was acquired in 2019 from the city of Santa Cruz, and that tower is estimated to be about 20 years old. Um, tower 2, which is currently located closest to the wharf, um, was acquired in 2008 from California State Parks, 
And that tower is estimated to be about 35 years old. Um, marine safety agencies usually retain the towers uh, for about 20 years and then plan for their retirement after that time frame. Um, in anticipation of the need to uh, purchase new towers, the city in 2019 uh, purchased two ramps that would connect to the surveyor senior tower model, which is the current model for the tower located for Tower One, which is um, the one that we acquired from Santa Cruz in 2019. That purchase was uh, or in order to spread some costs out of rep replacing these tires over a couple of years. Um, so Tower Two is currently in extremely poor condition. Um, the, that, and that condition has really degraded past the point of manageable, manageable repair, as well as ultimately the design um, of that tower is outdated and um, creates some additional safety issues that modern towers no longer have. Um, so uh, over the years, um, staff has attempted to identify a resource for getting a, a towers donated or um, to purchase for a lower cost as, of the used tower. Um, this is something that is rare to come by as marine safety agencies rarely send out um, those towers for auction due to liability concerns, whereas their preference is to actually um, destroy the tower since it is at the end of its life. Um, the tower that we acquired from the city of Santa Cruz was kind of a unique situation that was ultimately facilitated due to our shared service agreement um, because it would be their lifeguards that were working the tower that they had donated or to us. Um, so the budget, the, this 22-23 budget, did include $45,000 to purchase a new tower and plan for the retirement of Tower 2. Um, the currently in California as well as internationally, um, Industrial Design Research Inc. is um, kind of the sole source provider for lifeguard towers. It is uh, m most marine safety agencies in California um, use this particular vendor, and they also provide to coasts in Australia all over. Um, and in reaching out to begin the purchase for the tower, unfortunately due to scarcity of materials as well as um, inflation, the overall cost for the tower increased um, by $17,000. That increase includes the additional cost for the tower as well as the shipping of the tower from Southern California. So if approved, um, staff will increase the budget by $17,000 from the Equipment Internal Service Fund, and that would bring the total budget for this tower purchase to $62,000. So uh, my recommended action is to approve a resolution to amend the budget, increasing the amount of $45,000 to $62,000, an increase of $17,000 for the purchase of a new lifeguard tower. And with that, I am available for questions. Thanks, Nikki. Council questions? Oh. One question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Are these towers still, you know, have they improved over time? Will the uh, estimated lifetime increase now that they may have had a chance to improve them? Um, so in my conversations with the owner of the company, he definitely has assured um, that we can reasonably expect a 20-year lifespan. Um, he does comment that it'll go beyond that, um, it, but he definitely guarantees that per retirement policies, we can expect that life. So is the degradation due to the use on the beach or how we store it, or what is it ascribed to? Um, I, I, mostly it's just the environment so that, you know, uh, the coastal air is, degrades um, those kind of materials over time. There's lots of corrosion on towers over time. They are fiberglass and, and fiberglass that are coated. And so uh, sometimes that gets exposed. And over the, pa over the years, Public Works has taken the time to sand and repaint our current towers in order to make sure that those, that fiberglass is not exposed for the staff that are working that tower. So they do require regular um, 
maintenance and checks before they're brought out on the beach. Um, but you know, it, it's just a very common experience for any tower on the coast to be degraded over time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any public comments? Anything on Zoom? Uh, actually, yes, it looks like Jill. Great. Jill, go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Jill Landis again. Um, I have to say I'm rather shocked by the cost, especially when it got up to $62,000. I've had some major remodeling done on my house in the last nine months, and it makes me really appreciate my contractor. Um, I'm just curious, do other entities, is there any option of, like, building something that will – or does, it does the tower have to be moved at the end of the season? Is it? It just seems like a, a 20 year lifespan for something that costs that much seems a little out of scale to me. Do you want us to respond? Oh, please <laughs> respond. Yeah. Um, so before we had acquired the towers um, from California State Parks, the city actually did have wooden towers that were constructed on our beach and maintained um, by public works. Um, I believe that year that they were retired was 2002. And um, at that time, the city ultimately decided that to go with a, um, a constructed tower was really a better plan than to consider continue to have wooden towers that provide additional safety concerns and then have the city continue to maintain that is significantly more work than um, having a fiberglass tower that is stored in the courtyard and moved out for its seasonal use. I, I will also note that this current tower that we're retiring is probably about 35 years old mm -hmm. and this current design we would presume is going to be at a higher quality so i think the 20-year lifetime estimate is at a low end um, we've certainly been able to get more life out of our towers in the past great thank you any other online okay any other comments by council any motion i'll make a makers. motion I'll make a motion to approve the resolution to amend the budget, increasing the budgeted amount from forty-five to sixty-two thousand uh, for the purchase of the new lifeguard tower. I'll second. Great. We have a motion and a second. We can roll call, please. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. And Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Passes unanimously. That will take us on to item number seven, which is a <laughs> Before you get there, oh. excuse me, Vice Mayor, Council. Yes. I just received a text from the BIA, and I wanted to share it with you before we left tonight, that the test lights for the new Christmas lights were installed today. Great. And are available for reviewing in front of 201 and 207 Capitol Avenue. Sweet. So take a look at them. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. See what you think. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, Steve. Okay. Adjournment, Great. item seven. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your patience with me as I was stepping in today for Mayor Story. And thank you all for attending. It means a lot. Have a wonderful evening.